For decades, Australian companies, institutions, organisations and politicians and public servants have had a fairly straightforward public relations exercise. But that's going to change. And my guest today, Nick Allardyce, is going to be part of that change. You see, in the States, change.org now has six million members. It's looking to have many, many more than that. It's growing 500,000 a month. And Nick Allardyce is starting that organisation in Australia. And he will use the social media, Facebook, and he will mobilise hundreds of thousands and maybe millions of people in time who will use this site to focus their protests. And then Change will take some of these and run with them. And the amazing thing is that it actually will make money. Make money for the organisation. Well, that's the aim. This is a very new phenomena. And Nick Allardyce has some extraordinarily good advice for those who have to live in this world if you're an institution, a company or a politician. Nick, you are a startup in Australia, change.org. Tell us about this organisation in the US. What, what does it aim to do? So change.org, it's really, um, it's really a platform. Uh, so in the same way that YouTube is a platform for videos and eBay is a platform for auctions, change.org seeks to be a kind of a platform where anyone, any kind of concerned citizen or interest group or organisation or institution can come to start, join and win campaigns about the issues that matter. Uh, and so um, we kind of provide the best tool set in the world um, uh, that kind of empower people with technology to uh, you know, really kind of start, join and win those campaigns around the issues they care about. And do you help uh, some of those to win? Yeah, so we'll kind of look at the, look at the, um, look at uh, campaigns where there's kind of some sort of uni universal value set behind them, some clear injustice, um, and we'll kind of help them, um, and that could be in a number of different ways. It could be through connecting them to people who are already passionate about that issue. It could be in, um, you know, giving them training or support in kind of particular areas, but whatever it's going to take to help them win. How do you use social media in this? It, it's really fundamental. The, the world, like people um, are increasingly getting their um, their news, their information, their kind of product recommendations, you name it, they're getting it through a filter of social media. And so... Um, is this mainly Facebook? Facebook? Um, Facebook is definitely the single most important one. Um, uh, Twitter is also there, but in terms of penetration rates, like Twitter is only kind of 1% of the American population, whereas Facebook is, you know, really kind of extraordinary numbers. Um, and so we really kind of, it's a combination of things. We aggressively optimise all of our campaigns um, so that they're kind of completely built for that sharing in that social space. Um, but we also kind of train people in how to make use of that as well. And, and how many members has Change all got? So I think we're, we're in excess of 5 million now um, and it's really kind of growing exponentially at the moment. Um, we're growing at 500,000 members a month um, and a few months ago that was 300,000. So we're kind of starting to hit that growth curve that really kind of starts to go exponential. Uh, how do I become a member? Do I just register or do I pay anything? No, it's, it's completely free. Basically, to become a member, you just need to have kind of taken action through one of the campaigns that started on our site. Um, so, you know, with 1,500 new campaigns being started on the site every day, what that means is that there's kind of 1,500 new ways for people to become involved in the broader mission of Change.org. So, uh, you pick out an issue that you think you can run with. How do you tackle that? I think, um, so it, depending on the issue itself, um, you know, a whole bunch of different kind of tactics will be necessary to um, help them um, help them win. Um, usually what we do pick out is those issues where there has been a clear injustice, like where there's been a clear sense of um, discrimination or something like that. And so we might kind of start by kind of just talking to the person who started the campaign and kind of talking about what support they might need. But that could extend into anything from connecting them to interested NGOs who might be able to support them or media engagement support. Um, writing, strategy, you know, what, you whatever. Some protests and things like that to rally. Uh, no, look, we, we support people to um, win the campaigns that they, that they care about. In some circumstances, um, like undoubtedly that is going to lead to protests. Like I'll give you an example. One campaign that we're running at the moment is actually in Saudi Arabia where um, a, a woman has been thrown in jail for um, driving a car. 
um, where that's nominally kind of against the law. And so, you know, we're actually supporting a campaign at the moment where um, in a short amount of time you're going to have um, women's rights activists all across Saudi Arabia driving their cars on the same day. Really? Um, and it's organised via social media? Uh, in, in big part, yes. Um, it, it's only ever part of the picture. Social media is only ever a medium that can help you kind of reach more people faster. But there has to kind of underlie that a, a group of committed people who are kind of doing things offline as well. Uh, and was Jane Jorg involved in the Libyan war? Uh, no, we, we, we are, um, uh, we're only just kind of expanding internationally at the moment. Um, I, we have kind of been focused Some very much. social media groups were like that. Uh, I know that th there are certainly um, kind of, I guess, international organisations that are increasingly um, kind of bringing together concerned kind of citizens at the grassroots level to take action on international political issues that matter. Um, so... Uh, they sent cameras in and things like that, didn't they? Uh, so, you know, I in Egypt, for example, um, when uh, Mubarak um, kind of shut down the internet, um, one activist group called avaz.org, which is kind of, you know, uh, in, this, in a similar space, um, kind of fundraised money to um, get uh, cameras and, and kind of satellite telephones into activists within Egypt so that they could circumvent the, interna the internet firewall that had been put in place and, and keep that international attention that was really forcing the Egyptian government to come to the table. So how do you fund yourself? You've got, how many staff have you got? Uh, so Change.org's got around 50 staff at the moment. Um, most are based in uh, the US in Silicon Valley is our tech team and in uh, DC is our kind of campaigning team. But uh, we've got, there's a really, it's a really kind of innovative model where we uh, are able to connect um, the biggest kind of organisations in the world, biggest non-profit organisations in the world with potential new members. So someone like um, the, the One Campaign, which is the US version of the Make Poverty History Campaign, um, uh, you know, we'll look for kind of new members and, and so what we'll do is every kind of campaign that's started up that's got something to do with um, poverty, um, we'll kind of say you have the option to opt in and become a member of the One Campaign which runs really interesting um, campaigns around this issue. Uh, and so for every uh, person who chooses to do that, uh, that will, that, you know, the One Campaign will kind of pay um, change.org for that kind of referral fee. Um, and so that generates a really great revenue model where, um, you know, more members means, um, you know, more campaigns being started means the, our ability to connect more passionate people with other organisations and, and generate an income from them. So you're almost a, a, a profit-making protest group. Uh, I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't say that. I think, you know, we, are a real, we do have a really interesting um, model in that where um, we're not a traditional not-for-profit. Um, we're what's called a B Corp in the US, which uh, is... Um, takes the value set and purpose of a not-for-profit but combines that with I think the entrepreneurialism and the innovation and the efficiency of, uh, um, of a kind of you know enterprise itself. So if I'm an organisation or a company or an institution and um, you're organising a protest or about my business or my activities, how should I respond? What should I do? What well, you I, I think you know the same with social media, it's all about engagement. It's all about um, not ignoring issues before they kind of explode and, and proactively seeking out those who might have a concern about you know, a particular element of something that's happening. Um, because I think that you know, where that engagement is proactive, where a business or institution is able to kind of go, you know, there is a concern amongst certain members of the community in a particular area, but if I'm proactively and I reach out to those people and start a kind of a dialogue, um, and start talking about what it might look like to resolve the issue or, or something like that, then um, it's going to mean that it's, it's far less likely to kind of escalate into anything that's, um, you know... But that's real. Basically, I, I have to, my organisation would have to operate through Facebook or one of these social media sites. And the person doing that has to get a lot of authority um, that's very difficult for a big organisation to do, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, I, I think not only from a change.org's point of view, but I think increasingly um, organisations are grappling with that fact, the fact that things move so quickly in that online world uh, and uh, they're increasingly needing to have a brand presence within that space 
uh, but the level of empowerment that's needed for staff to engage in that area I think is um, something that a lot of companies are grappling with at the moment and um, in many ways um, you know that's kind of I, th I think that's a really good thing because ultimately that's where the consumer is that's where people are talking about their products that's where people are um, having those discussions um, regardless of whether or not the, the company itself has a presence and so I think companies that fail to capitalise um, on that conversation, fail to insert themselves into that conversation and understand what their consumers are actually saying on an ongoing basis, are the ones that are going to struggle most when there is consumer backlash against a particular product or, or something similar. But how, I'm the CEO, how on earth, there's a, someone down the ground, for, uh, on the coal, I'm a CEO, there's someone on the coal face um, committing me to do things or saying things that I know nothing about, that's very hard. What companies I think need to realise is that social media is, whilst it is different and it does change many of the rules, um, it is simply another medium um, that, ma that, me that marketing and communications um, has kind of grappled with these issues for a long time and so I think if you can put the right people in place, if you can put the right boundaries around what they are and are not able to do, then there's no reason why and engaging in social media um, shouldn't be kind of any different from a more traditional communication set. It's just that it is more dynamic and it, it's just that um, the consumer can suddenly start engaging back with you and that's probably what scares most people. <laughs> and if I'm a politician, it's a nightmare because um, I've got, I'm, I'm responsible for parliament, I've got a public service, how do they handle I think the public service is really kind of struggling with it at the moment. I think that, um, you know, the levels of authority to sign things off, I think, um, you know, they see the value, but they're not quite sure how they can kind of manoeuvre this massive bureaucracy into actually engaging that space. But the reality is that, you know, over, I, think, I think it's almost like 10 million Australians are on Facebook now. Um, and that's where people are. And so I think um, companies or even public service or politicians who fail to engage in that space um, are, are going to become increasingly irrelevant. You in the campaign business, let's look to Australia now. You're only just starting here, I know. But, and say, these people are easy pickings. <laughs> I think, um, you know, I, I think that the, uh, the organisations that are less developed in this place certainly, um, certainly aren't as ready to engage with any sort of consumer backlash, any sort of consumer feedback, because they're not used to, it's used, they're used to having a one-way conversation where they just kind of broadcast out their marketing and their media um, and, and they presume that people accept that. And, and increasingly, uh, people are being given the opportunities and the avenues to say, you know what, we don't buy it. Or, you know what, like, we think that that's not good enough. Um, and, and so companies that fail to listen to that, I think, are gonna be the ones that become irrelevant. I think you start up in July, is that right? Uh, end of July, yeah. Okay. It's early days yet, but where do you think you might target initially? I think you know what, what we're definitely going to be looking for are those those kind of moments of of, of clear injustice. Like you know, we, we are not in the business of um, kind of you know looking at political or partisan issues and kind of backing those um, strongly. Like we're a platform that empowers people first and foremost to start and run and win issues that they care about. And so first and foremost, they're, they're, it's, it's about them um, and about those kind of issues. But when we do pick up and promote an issue, it's about those moments of clear injustice where there is some sort of universal value set, like the Saudi Arabian um, driver that I was mentioning before. Um, or, or similar in the US, there's been a, a case where um, a, a couple of uh, imams, um, Muslim um, religious leaders, were kicked off a, um, a Delta flight um, for, despite the fact that they'd passed security checks twice because they made the pilot uncomfortable. Um, and so they were kicked off essentially for being Muslim. Um, and, and that for us is, you know, that moment of, um, you know, clear injustice where, you know, that, that's, that's kind of pretty outrageous and I think most people would, yes. would agree that if you can pass two security checks and, and the only thing you're doing is, is wearing Muslim gear, then, um, then you have a right to go on that flight. Um, to some extent, though, there'll be easy issues, but very often there'll be two sides and you'll be playing almost a god. We'll go this way. Does that worry you? I think, um, I, I think what it comes back to and, and what we remind ourselves of is first and foremost, we're about empowering people. Like, and, and I think that um, that's where all of our energy goes towards is that platform environment. 
And so whilst we will kind of support campaigns where there is those moments of clear injustice, the overwhelming majority of campaigns that are run on our site um, uh, are ones that are started and completely run without any input from ourselves. And so it's very possible to kind of have two campaigns completely opposing each other um, uh, on the same site. Uh, and, and they'll be kind of going back and forth. And really what our tools enable them, people to do is connect with their communities of support. And if they, if they are able to mobilise a significant number of people around a particular issue, then it's clear that there is a significant amount of concern around that. How many members do you expect to have in Australia? I think um, we're still kind of working out exactly what kind of penetration is going to be possible. Um, I think uh, we're going to. I, I think that it's going to be entirely possible um, to uh, be in the kind of half a million range um, within Australia reasonably quickly. I think we are deciding. We're, I think we're kind of um, thinking that about a 10% market penetration of any um, of any kind of population around the world is. is might be possible um, and so kind of eventually getting to a, a around kind of two million within Australia is um, what we'll be shooting for. And the target globally must be enormous. Uh, we, we think that we're on a trajectory at the moment potentially to hit 100 million um, members within three years um, and I think that that's um, you know and I, and I think that that's what becomes exciting is where you have a community of people who are all dedicated to kind of creating a better world um, and, and all kind of taking action to do that. I think that's an enormously exciting thing. Thanks, Nick. Thanks for having me.